Hello. Hello, sir. We got it rolling. Nice. Got it working. Perfect. Right on. So with us on the phone, we got Mr. Lauren Walker Madsen. What's up, buddy? What's going on, man? Good to hear from you. You too. How the hell are you, man? You've been laying a little low for you lately, it seems like, huh? Oh, man. You caught wind of that, huh? No, it's... That's uh, all right. Yeah. We all need it. I see you're also... I also see, though, that you're getting a little active these days, too, so... Yeah, no, the last few months, yeah, no, uh, it's been nice, kind of just uh, the colder months have always yeah. kind of been that time for me to, I don't know, be recluse and hang out at home a little bit, yeah. but yeah, it was a good year, so, you know, coming out of that last time I saw you uh, up at Ruckus, um, mm-hmm. did a little, few other things after that, and then kind of hanging out at home with my wife and doing some things, so yeah. it's been good. Right on. Hey, I'm gonna smoke a little bit of marijuana. I hope you don't care. No, you probably should. I should probably make the round downstairs and have myself in a minute. Nice. Yeah. Hey, and what about you? How are you? How's life with you? Oh, I'm not too bad, man. I I just got back from Tacoma a few days ago. Did a benefit show up there. Uh, and where was know. that at? Did, did you do that over at the Valley? <laughs> no, actually, um, I love the Valley. I absolutely love those guys to death, but <clears throat> there's a couple venues that just opened up there that have got some really good owners and they've um are better set up to do music. Cool. So, um I love the Valley. Absolutely love them and I really I'm not talking shit on them. They've been great to me forever, but their setup's a sure. little wonky sometimes, but I've dealt with worse really, you know. But Sure. Sure. Now, how did it go out there? I know you you tend to make the rounds out to Tacoma and go see, you know, the Travelers, I'm sure. Saw them. Did yeah. you play with them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I saw oh, Honey yeah. Cut out there and then Blood, Fire, Rainwater. Um, yeah, uh, it was good. I just fucking, uh, we did pretty good. Had a pretty good set. I, right. uh, I really, um, Kind of flew up there and flew back, though, you know. It was kind of a short run this time. Which is good, because I kind of didn't plan on going up there. I went up there to talk some business. And, uh, it was kind of last minute, so I didn't really uh, plan on it. Because I'm with you. Like, I kind of tend to stay home during the winter just because I've been snowed into Seattle before. Yeah. So... Um, cause it's a fucking crapshoot, you know, I've been up in that corner and then Snoqualmie dumps fucking snow and then it oh, yeah. rains in Portland and I'm stuck in the little corner there. Oh yeah. You know, it's like yeah. 50 degrees and raining in Seattle, but everywhere around me is frozen. So I can't get back home. Yeah. You don't want to mess with that. Yeah. I just, you know, I, I just, it's tough. And you, you know, I sometimes you know, I'll go out, do some short stuff. It seems like during the, the cold yeah. months, you know, maybe by myself and, been doing more things closer to home. What kind of winters does do Utah stuff. have? They have pretty brutal ones, don't they? Probably not quite as brutal as Montana, but probably a little brutal, huh? Yeah, no, they def- it gets brutal down here for sure. Uh, yeah, we get a lot of snow. Uh, we sit about 5,000 feet, so we get a lot of snow. Um, it's been more mild the last, you know, handful of years. Yeah. But, um, but we've been known to have some, some brutal winters. And it's not as bitter cold like Montana. That's the thing about Montana is, Man, I think that was one of the last, speaking of, one of probably the last runs of shows I did during, like, December was probably three or four years ago, did, like, two weeks, and, and a week of those we spent in Montana, it felt like, and it, yeah. I, mean, I don't even think it got above negative 10 or 11 degrees, I mean, it was oh, fucking yeah, I've been cold. There. It's you know, so weird, so. they're so good with the you know, roads, though. Yeah. It's, like, insane cool. how, like... They're like fucking, there's like eight feet of snow around you, but the roads are fucking clear. <laughs> it's like, I've yeah, never seen to... anything fucking like it. It's great. Yeah, we just, yeah, so anyway, it gets, it gets cold. It's been nice down here. We got a little bit of snow today, um, but it's still, you know, 35, 45 degrees. It's yeah. not too bad, but. That's where it's yeah, man, I love here. Yeah. We haven't really got any snow, though. Yeah, what about up there where you're at? You guys, does it get pretty, pretty brutal? Or Dude, I mean, you get a lot of so... snow where you're at, or? It's so fucking weird. Like one, some years we'll get snow once or twice and they'll barely stick. And other years we're fucking ended up our assholes. 
for fucking yeah. months on end. Like it's there's no rhyme or reason to it. But this year they're calling for like so like two years ago we had probably one of the worst winners I've ever fucking seen here. And then uh um and they got it even worse up by the Grand and Baker and stuff like that. Sure. And then uh <laughs> I gotta last get a story year, about that. Last year oh, wasn't big. so bad. And then okay. uh this year they're calling for a warm one. I guess there's like a warm front up by Alaska. So it's been real mellow lately. Sure. What what do you yeah, have a funny story about? I was just well, that's a big reason. It's funny how it all came around. And you said Baker and and Legrand in that area was just because that's a big reason why I don't uh tour during the winter months anymore i mean in winter months being like between you know after thanksgiving and you know uh you know up until at least the end of february yeah yeah. um you know it's tough to be out and 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 have the band on the road and truck a van and a trailer around and all that but um in 2008 i was playing in a band and uh and we were doing we were doing a tour and we were headed up that way we played in pocatello idaho and it was um shit man just about right now uh december it was the 8th of december oh. and uh 2008 and just a, a kind of a just like maybe two week run of shows northwest thing and we were going from pocatello to yakima and we had to go up 84 yeah and yeah right so we made the drive sure. yep so we made the drive after the show down cabbage hill yeah, and it's just, we hit some black ice and actually rolled the van. It spun us around in a 360 and actually rolled off the side of the road like one and a half times with a van and trailer. Oh, and, shit. Uh, ended up sideways in a fucking ditch um, on the side of the road. And it was it like we were doing it overnight. So this is like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. And we were probably just about... I don't know, man, maybe like four or five miles outside of Baker um, going west or northwest up that way. So anyways, yeah, it was scary as shit. Everybody ended up being all right. There were some four or five of us at the time in that band. and um, But yeah, we were posted up. We got towed into Baker and stayed in the motel for three, three days, I think, until mm. we could figure out how to get, you know, our shit back home and so that was, yeah, I mean, it, it's tough during the winter months, you know, and mm-hmm. it can be, you know, it can be scary out there. It's been a little more mellow, it seems like, the last couple of years around around here, but, yeah. Um, but shit, man, yeah, that area can be fucking nasty. If uh, you can pull it, it off, you know, though, it can be good. It, absolutely, absolutely. The bars are always full this time of year. Well, I know, I gotta, yeah, as you do, I know, I have some buddies that like to go out this time of year, mm-hmm. and as do I, and. I always, you know, it's, yeah, it's tough. I love to go out and play shows during that time, but um, I found it hard. I like to do it, I think, more, you know, one or two guys, myself, maybe maybe one or two of us, taking the whole band and stuff out on the road and during the winter. seems like everybody's fucking miserable and cold, and, yeah. you know, it's just it's tough if you hit it on a bat. Oh, and then loading fucking equipment and ice is just a pain in the ass. That's never, yeah, that's never fun, but yeah, it's all good. Well, good. I'm glad uh, Tacoma was good for you. That's how we got time about it. Yeah, I'm glad that was a fun, fun time up there. Yeah, good, uh, good people. So, uh, did you were you raised in Salt Lake City? Uh, I was raised here. Yeah, so I moved here when I was about seven years old, um, six or seven years old, I believe, and then. We were bouncing around from, I was born in Colorado and we lived in Pennsylvania for a brief stint and oh, then, wow. and then been here. Yeah. So my family started here. My parents met in Utah and then uh, just dad, you know, line of work kind of moved around and that kind of thing. So what do you, what's he do? Well, back then he was working in the hotel business, um, just working in the hotel industry and then we moved we ended that's what brought us back to utah ski resorts and the hotels up around the ski resorts that we have that are close to salt lake city um and so i took a job out out here and and we stayed and yeah now he's now he's not uh retired now he uh he just drives he's got like a big suv and uh up around the ski resorts he just kind of shuttles he does uber and stuff like that single single guy and 
you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was playing up in this little tavern that's kind of up in this mountain town, and uh-huh. he just some girls, I guess he they, he had to give a ride around town, and they were looking for somewhere to go, and brought him over to the bar and showed him there was some live music. <laughs> he always <laughs> comes by and swings by the shows and stuff, but he's that's yeah, he's great. just kind of doing his thing, living the single life, driving mm-hmm. around. Right on. <laughs> right on. So, <laughs> yeah, man, but Utah's home. Okay. And then you went back to Colorado for a little while, didn't you? Um, I didn't move back there. Um, I almost did. I spent a lot of time out there, but I never moved back there. Uh, I moved to Arizona. Oh, that's uh, right. You went to Arizona. 2015. Um, yeah, I married my wife. Uh, her uh, work and career, she does property management uh, for some apartment complexes that are out of there and in the southwest and so we were down there for about two years and oh right huh? that was a change but uh, arizona's cool though yeah yeah it's uh i really love the state I, we were living in uh, outside of phoenix okay and um phoenix is crazy man it's just too big for me it's just yeah, it's a pretty big it's city. A sprawl but i like arizona though beautiful state it's a great place yeah it's so um I don't know, man. It's like, it's so, like most states, there's just a lot more to it than people think. You know? Mm -hmm. Uh, Absolutely. Like Jerome and Prescott Valley, that area is way different than what people think of when they think of Arizona, you know? Absolutely. Have you you parts of Arizona that gets snow, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, have you, have you played up there in Jerome before? And I have not, like that? but that's a funny story. Um, so when I was touring with Bob, um, uh-huh. we ended up staying at Maynard's house from Tool. Yep. Um, we, uh, stayed at, uh, by his house though. I don't mean like his main house. A lot of, like that's my semi claim to fame with the whole music thing is that I stayed at his guest house, which is like a tiny be- a two bedroom house. Actually it might've even been a one bedroom house. And it was like, I don't know, probably like 200 yards away from his big one there that you can't see because it's really hidden. Mm-hmm. It might have been like, I don't know, it might have even been like 300 yards or so away. But it's really, I mean, he, the place that he picked to build it is a genius because it's really close to everything, but you can't fucking see it unless you walk up on it. Gotcha. And uh, he's yeah, got... Yeah, he, an interesting spot, so... Yeah, and he owns like a whole street there. So okay. like, and then it's gated, which is kind of a dead giveaway. It was somewhat where he's at, you know, and then there's like sure. three houses and we stayed, actually, we stayed in the house that the, all the Pussifer merch is mailed out of and stuff. Gotcha. Okay. So yeah, he came down like, so I, I was the only guy that was in the van that actually fucking liked tool or Maynard <laughs> and nobody fucking uh, woke me up to come and meet the guy. Because, like, and then our guitar player acted like a fangirl and scared him away, never came back. <laughs> Cause that's he, funny. Yeah, that's always been my claim to fame. It's like I was like fucking feet away from my hero when I slept through it. Um, I, yeah, I decided uh, to. I, I rarely slept in the band if, van either. If there was like a house to stay at, I'd fucking was all about yeah. it usually. But I, I'd fell asleep in the van on the way up and then. Uh, I was like, fuck you're it, I'm out, just going to stay here, you know? <laughs> and I got up the next day, and Bob was like, yeah, I came down and had pancakes. And I'm like, you motherfuckers, like, didn't bother. Like, I've told you all before with this. And that's the funny, too. Is like, we didn't know we were going to end up staying there. But I told them, like, at the beginning of the tour when they asked me who, I like, one of my favorite bands was. I was like, Tool. I was like, I fucking oh, told man. all you motherfuckers, like, you know? Right, you stupid right. stupid fuckers course. didn't wake me up. To have well, pancakes cool with town. Maynard. <laughs> I mean, that's that's fucked up, but that's a great town. Yeah, so no, it's a really awesome it. town. There's like, there's very few towns in this country that compare to Jerome as far as beauty, natural beauty goes. Mm-hmm. Um, I can the only one I can think of that's better, actually, in my opinion, is Eureka Springs, Arkansas, and that's just my All opinion. Right. Have you okay. been there? You know what? I don't think I have actually spent any time in Eureka Springs, mm. uh, but Arkansas in general, I've definitely driven around a bunch of it. 
um, played some shows in mm-hmm. some different spots. It's and, one of those towns bad. that's buried in the Ozarks. It's like right. fucking buried in the Ozarks. Kind of like Jerome. Like, you know, Jerome's like built into the fucking hill there almost. Right, it is. That's absolutely. almost exactly how fucking Eureka Springs is. It's like built into the hill, but it's in the Ozarks instead of in the desert. So they're both really cool. Like, sure, no, it, it's a great spot. Yeah, and so for anyone that actually hasn't been up there, I mean, like that was the big. Like when I was living in Arizona, I mean, that was what really made it. Mm-hmm. Just it was a breath of fresh air getting out because we we did like I said lived in the sprawl of Phoenix. I think there's like six million people or something down there. It's just ridiculous. So a lot of the shows that I was doing to kind of get out and explore when I was getting down there were places up kind of in the, the hill country like Jerome. Mm-hmm. There's a little town called Cottonwood and Sedona and stuff. And like you said, those areas are just, man, it's, it's beautiful. They're trippy yeah. out there too. Like that yeah. up yeah. in that hill, there's like, so like, I swear to God. So like this was back in like 2010, 2009 when I was up there. So I just got a phone, and it was just a cheap-ass flip phone because that's all they had a lot of the time back then. Sure. But, um, you know, those things are notorious for going dead real fast. And my phone was on 1% for two days. I didn't (laughs) fucking shut it off. I was using it because I was telling all my fucking friends I was at Maynard's house from Tool and shit. Oh, that's great. And but it didn't fucking go dead. It was the weirdest thing. And like, there's all kinds of vortexes and UFO sightings and weird, uh, spiritual shit. And then you're at fucking Maynard's house, and you know all the fucking rumors that go with that. So it's like, yeah, the whole thing was like fucking weird. It was cool though. It was an experience. And I actually hung out with Maynard's dad a bunch. Oh, that must have been pretty interesting. Yeah, dude, he's like. The guy was like 70, but he looked like he was 50. Like, he was in great shape. The guy hikes like fucking 10 miles in those hills every day. That's awesome. He looks like a Native American dude. He's just like fucking got the braid and the headband, and he looks like Maynard a lot, but super good shape, eats well. Just like a cool guy to be around. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. You know, I know like when I played up there, because there's a bar, there's... I think there's two bars in Jerome. Yeah. And there's one bar that does live music called the Spirit Room. And it's a great spot, man. Just a really, really cool place. I've played a handful of times now. And um but I know every time I play there, you know, Maynard always gets brought up. You know, I yeah. think the population of the town is like four hundred something people. Well people um, fucking move the there. Place. People have fucking moved there because oh, they're sure. nuts, sure they dude. I'm sure they have Tool yeah. fans are fucking crazy. That poor fucking guy, no wonder he's weird and hates people. <laughs> Yeah, people uh, fucking true. move there. These, I guess there's like these two girls that move there. The second they found out that he lived there, they moved to the fucking town. Uh, that's ridiculous. Which is, so nice. wait, so this, you were with Bob. So was this, um, and you said 2011? It was like 2000, 2010, 2009, maybe. Okay. Nice. Okay, so was that now... Are you from Oregon? How did that all come about? I mean, are you was that your first tour, or how did you? Yeah, that was my get, first get tour. out on the road. That was your first one because I thought you said that your first one was with Bob. Yeah, I just I sold merch though. I wasn't playing any yet. Okay, and that's how I became Dog Bite. Actually, was he gave Apple. you the name, didn't he? Yeah, I fucking got bit by Andy Gibson's dog in Nashville, and fucking son of bitch, stuck. <laughs> it stuck with me. <laughs> But yeah, uh, so well, I met him up here. I was living in Eugene at the time, actually. And okay. I caught my first Hank 3 show when Bob was opening, and that's where I first met him at. And then I moved to Seattle and started going out to the shows all the time, and we just fucking ended up hanging out. And I okay. dropped out of college in Seattle and moved because it's a fucking crazy-ass expensive town and moved back here to Hepner. And he okay. hit me up and... I wasn't doing shit. I was super depressed because I dropped out of college and wasn't doing well. And uh, he was like, hey, you want to go on tour? I was like, fuck. <laughs> that could not be better timing. I'm pretty much the homeless anyways. I might as well be fucking selling t-shirts on the road. Why not? So Hatner's home, though. Like, a, like, yeah. Are you? That's where you're from. Yeah, I was fucking born in that little town, believe it or not. Really? 
All right. I actually so live in a little around. town called Ione now. It's like fucking 14 I've miles been through Ione. Yeah, on the way to come see you. Yeah, probably. Right. Yeah, that's where I'm at now. I'm kind of boycotting happening a little bit right now. Like this. <laughs> all right, all right. Tell me why. Oh fuck! I I really don't want to go too far me. into it, but I'll tell you a little bit. I mean, I'm just bitter about the whole ruckus thing. You know, they're kind of okay. like just okay. like fucking. That town has got a lot of fucking old bloodlines in it. And if you don't share that bloodline and you come up with an idea, it ain't going to fucking work unless they want it to. So if you say anything or do anything that those people fucking disagree with, you're fucked. And that's, I mean, that's part, I'm not going to say that's like, I don't know, I feel like that contributed to the death of Ruckus and the Boonies in some way. I don't think it was, there was a lot of other pieces that, you know, sure, that, that went with that, but. There's that, and you know, it's just like it's oh, just that makes sense. Shit. You can leave it at that. I I get I get what you're saying. Um, you know, my mom having, was my I, I was raised by a single mom in that town that was uh, a bartender for a living that you know and had a bit of a drug problem and wasn't perfect, you know. So when hmm. when you're in a town of that size, whatever your parents do sticks to you. Sure. So. And, you know, and, and another thing, too, is, like, my mom hung out with all the wild guy people in Hebner. So, like, I hung out with all the wild guys, ki- you people's kids, you know? So then your kid, you know, the people you fucking hang out with as a kid sticks fucking to you, you know? Sure. So, and then, you know, there's the whole dog bite thing, fucking which, you know, if anybody's listened to my albums, it's not their kind of country music, and it's offensive in some ways you know that and i hate donald trump so that's against me right now gotcha gotcha well you know, i was really you know, cool though man they're like i mean they're pretty much like uh um a little more laid back than hepner you know um i pulled my kid out of hepner school and brought her here and that's kind of what started the whole motion of it she started doing really good here and Good. House came open, and we're like, fuck it. Let's stick around and see what happens. We're unhappy with the house we were in. Taking it. Well, that's good, man. Sounds like sounds like the change was a good one. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. This is kind of like turned into you interviewing me. You should start a podcast, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, man? I don't have fucking time for a podcast. You, you got the damn voice it. for it. You got like this. You got I'm such a thought- good radio voice. Oh, thanks, man. You know, I've thought about it, and and maybe somewhere down the road it'll happen. Um, what I am trying to do in 2019, though, is I I've it's not a podcast. Um, it's it's an idea I've been kicking around for probably two or three years. So uh, it's just been something cooking. But um, I do want to do some kind of like a webisode. You know, maybe five. You know, maybe five to seven minute long. Uh, things and I have a song that's off the second record I put out. Uh, it's called Life Behind the Wheel. Yeah, and I just, you know, I think it'd be great to have it. You know, I kind of want to call it that, Life Behind the Wheel, and and kind of interview, you know, buddies, interview guys like you, you know, interview some of my favorite, you know, songwriters, but also interview some of my favorite bar owners, um, or venue owners, yeah, or you know, fucking favorite cook at a, you know, maybe a, you know diner that we like to get just whatever exactly. get it creative just stuff that happens um and kind of just you know it's been something i've wanted to do but i didn't want to start it and do it without being able to follow through as i'm sure you understand yeah that. and it's so. like the thing that because we've kind of tried to do something a little similar and first off like I tried to do it with my old partner from dog water and like us getting our schedules together is a pain in the ass. So like essentially I was just like, I need to do something and this thing, I can't wait around for him to do shit. Like if we do something, that's great, but I'm not going to like count on it. So I can need to do shit on my own. But you know, like when you start getting into these things, like you just realize how much work it is, you know, it's like, sure. it's great, but it's like, it's work. Like right now I've got two guys editing shit for me because I can't do it myself because I'm not on the computer right now. So it's like, I feel bad, but they're, they're not complaining. They kind of like to do it. So like I have got them both doing a little bit of editing, but um, 
It's like finding yeah, the right mic. Yeah, finding the right mics, finding the good enough cameras. You know, it's a, um, it's a really tough. I, I'm lucky. The I got editing, a really man. Mm-hmm. The, the editing just takes so much time. Like building the content is one thing. I've got so yeah. much video and content from you know yeah, the last yeah. few years of touring, but to sit down and you know put it all together, yeah, it, it is, it's tough, man. That and I mean, I, there. I, there's a lot more to that than people think too, though. It takes a lot of time rolling footage to get a good 10 sure. minute clip, you know? Oh yeah. People don't understand yeah. that. It's like, it's hard to find good enough shit. Like, fuck dude, it took me forever to get comfortable enough with doing gravel road therapy. Just it's like talking. Like yep. I, I look back at it and like, now I'm like, I make myself work harder at it because I'm like, I do a lot of um, oh's, and ah, just like, it's weird to talk to yourself <laughs> with the camera. Totally. So, like, I try to run through everything I'm going to say and not fly by the seat of my pants so much. And then I try to, like, all right, well, if you draw a blank, just, like, relax and don't say um or shit or whatever, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I think you're on the right track, man. I mean, it's like we were talking about before we started doing this interview. You know, I mean, it's just... Um, you know, you've, you've been doing it in one form or another for a while now. Yeah. So, you know, definitely think you're on the right track. I appreciate you taking the time to, to hit my ass up. Well, yeah, man. Like you know, you're one of so. my favorites out there, man. I'm uh, uh, always yeah, appreciate it. So what, you got anything in the, you got any irons in the fire for a new album? I, I do. Yeah. So it's been slow on the, on the music side of things. The last record I put out was an EP, which was, the end of 2017 so yeah I'm, i've been working on some new tunes i'm always writing stuff i've got a bunch of ideas just stuff there's just bits and pieces yeah so the last few months of being off the road has been really nice um for that i've got a few new tunes that i've been feeling really good about and then talking about maybe doing before doing uh i'm definitely going to do a full-length record sometime this next year um and record it um, I'm going to probably engineer it myself. I've been getting my hands back into more of that at a studio down here in Salt Lake City, um, as well as a spot at my own place. And so that's kind of something I'll be doing more probably in 2019 and, and the year after that in 2020 is um, starting to really just just switch gears and probably not so much touring the next couple of years, but focus on a new record and not force it or, or rush with it you know in this day and age it's crazy i mean you know you just i don't know man i just don't feel you know i don't feel like i have to hurry to get it out and then get back on the road right now which is something i haven't felt in a little while so yeah but yeah looking to maybe do i'm looking to maybe do a split with uh um the truck bed boys uh oh. the fucking cool cats from uh up in the northwest yeah i know um, truck bed and, boys Sure. And they, you know, they've been really great to me when I go up and play in Tacoma and Bremerton. And those have been some spots that have been good. And, and those, those guys have been awesome to me. And they asked me a while ago last year if I'd be interested. So I think we're, we're starting to talk about that. So I might, might go in and, and track two new songs for that coming up pretty soon. And then somewhere along the lines here in the next I don't know, probably probably the next six months start laying down a new record. It's it's time, but I'm not it's not time yet. We're almost, I guess almost there, mm-hmm. but this next year for sure. You got any plans on who you want to play on it with you? That's a great question. Nobody ever asked me that shit. Mm-hmm. Um uh, cool. I do because I want to know who you're gonna have on it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's interesting because you know, the first the first two releases I did, you know, the first one's like most albums. You're always trying to figure yourself out and, you know. Yeah, yeah, think, yeah. Oh, man, that. if I could throw my first two away, oh, fuck, I would. <laughs> of like, course. Yeah, dude, and people, like, <laughs> still shout out some of those songs. I'm like, I'm not fucking playing it. <laughs> yeah, and that's what's fun about it, you know, is that, you know, you grow in the, the moment in time. That's really what a record is. Yeah. You know, me, for sure, is just that moment in time. I think about that, too, is, you know, I'd love to go back and track some of this, you know, some of those songs maybe now or go back and do it or whatever. But, um, you know, I've had a lot of great players. But what I was getting at is that the, the first two albums, I had pretty much the same uh, group of guys playing with me. And then they toured the first three, three and a half years really hard. 
with me and when I was getting the ball rolling with this uh, project. And uh, after that, it's been kind of on the fly and uh, and trying to to make it work. Hey, pups, knock it up. Um, and so, you know, you know how that is too, you know, kind of there's different people coming and going on the road and playing yeah. shows and different lineups. So it's been more of that. The EP, the last thing I recorded was still that kind of a, a mix up of different uh, players. So to answer your question, um, I put yeah. a little bit of thought into it. The first, you know, actually all three of those releases were done with an electric bass when I've been playing with more of an upright the last two or three years. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I really like both, um, you know, Amy Estelle, Ray Matthews, those are the two upright players that have been playing with me most recently. And, and I don't know, probably get some upright on this new record for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, shit, man, I don't know. The only guy that's been for sure on all three of the albums and played on all three of mine is the pedal steel player. And he's a good buddy of mine from Utah, but he's just, he's got a good career. He's a geologist. Is he the same guy that did the shit for uh, Ugly Valley Boys? Uh, no, I don't know who did Ugly Valley Boys. Actually, that's a good question. Because he did pe- they had pedal steel on that, too. Yeah, I'd need to look that up. You know, I know those guys a bit, being from the same town. Mm. Uh, they don't play out a ton, um, but I don't know who did that record and who did steel on it. But Ryan Hillier is is uh, my buddy that played on on mine and i just met him right around the same time i was getting the ball rolling and we just hit it hit it off you know he's an only child his dad raised him on a whalen and you know ralph mooney licks and mm-hmm. fucking that kid just you know he loves loves playing the pedal steel but he like i said he can't really be on the road and you know steel players are hard to come by so it's, oh they sure are but anyway, so I don't know, you know, I definitely would love to get some of these guys that have been playing with me the last couple of years, you know, definitely some upright, um, you know, I really love keeping it to about a five person sound, you know, fiddle yeah. upright. Yeah, because you don't um, want to add too much, especially with country music, because then it starts drowning things out. Yeah. In yeah, my no, opinion, no. country music's a very personal style of music, you know, like, uh, so you want things that are going to um, stick out on their own and accent, you know, like a, um, what the fuck is the word I'm looking for? Kind of like... Uh, Accentuate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, Maybe. The lyrics and everything else with it, you know. Sure. You start throwing too much noise in that shit, it takes away from, you know, the storytelling Absolutely. type of music. Yeah, man, less know? is more. Sometimes, uh, sometimes you know. it is. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a great question, though, man. But I, yeah, you know, definitely have some 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 of the cats that have been playing with me. Probably more on the road. A lot of the people that have been playing with me the last couple of years on the road haven't recorded. Um, some. What about AB? Are you gonna have AB on there? You know what AB? Um, I'd love to, man. You know, it's it's been hard, you know, him and then like I said, Ray. Um, who was with me at Ruckus since last year. They've been with me the last couple of years, and they just, you know, he lives out in Alabama, raised in North Carolina, and um, I love playing with Abe. And um, so, yeah, I'm sure he'll probably make it onto the record, too. We've never recorded anything together, and there was a new song that we did. We played it up at Ruckus this last year. It was one of the newer tunes I was working on at the time, and, and, and I really loved what he was doing on it. So it's just, for me, it's been tough because being – um, you know, being a small artist and an independent musician, you, I mean, you know the struggle just as well as anybody. But you know, it's tough when you're bringing, pulling, picking, and pulling guys from other states and across the country to come play with you. Um, you know, it adds it adds up, especially with how much I've been touring the last five or six years. Um, you know, the last three has been a lot of bringing guys and gals to and from tours. And the travel costs just, you know, it just burns me sometimes. It's just, it, it can be tough. Yeah, man. So, and from what I hear. I get those guys like Abe to come out and do more yeah. stuff, I will. So I'm hoping to, um, I'm hoping to, yeah, right to on. answer your question. But yeah. Yeah. You got to, but you, you know, you got a good reputation with taking care of your band members too. I don't know if you know that or not. Uh, I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I thank you. I guess I don't know that. I I hope so. That's a tough. <laughs> man. That's 
that's a subject a lot of people don't bring up either, you know, but, yeah. you know, it's it's out there, especially in country music. It's hard. Um, or root, roots music, singer song. Well, right, so, yeah, it. here and here's so. the deal, too. It's like, um, I mean, you take a band, right, and you slap a name on it, and you go out on tour. It's different than putting your fucking first and last name on it and then a band name on it and going out on tour because you become solely responsible for the people in your band at that point in time pretty much you know sure because it's you it's your fucking name on everything the band at that point is a revolving door like you know your your yours is kind of you know absolutely well and i'm always you know and to be honest you know i tell this to my guys and gals the people that have been coming out on the road with me so they started doing this is you know i mean one you know probably the thing i say the most is like what works for me might not work for everybody you know, by any means, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to trying to make it work. And I'm learning all the time with the dynamic of, you know, hired guns, quote unquote, or however you want to yeah. put it, hired musicians. Um, but, you know, I'm always selling myself, you know, and that's what you're doing when you're kind of the, the captain mm-hmm. of the ship is, you know, you are, you know, you don't want to be too nice, but you don't want to be too much of an asshole. And, but, you know, it's a fucking hard balance. line to walk, too. It, it is. Absolutely, man. You can't no, fucking play <laughs> shit for can't play shit for free, but then again, you can't fucking ask for too much, you know. It's like, and it's and it's tough, you know. And but you know that's the biggest thing when I'm on the road and when I have a band is you know it's it's the first thing is trying to put together a group of people that you feel like you know can get along. Yeah, and that you can uh, tolerate in a van for multiple hours yeah, a day man. for days on yeah, end. Yeah, yeah, that's not that's, that's hard. Not in, that's hard for anybody, even people that have known each other for fucking oh, yeah. years. Sometimes. There's people I love that I wouldn't want to tour with. You know, I love oh, people. Absolutely. There's a lot of people I love with all my heart. I wouldn't want to tour with. You know, absolutely. That's it's a different world, as you know. And but and there's people I don't man. like all that much that I could probably <laughs> tour with fine. Sure. <laughs> you know, well, that's that's true. But. No, that's, well, it's nice of you to bring that up and say that there's somewhat of a good rap, because, you know, I just, with the guys out there, I've seen, you know, we've all seen the horror stories of, of people on the road, or like I said, the hired the guns, breakdowns, too, the you break, know. Exactly, you know, and it's you hear rough. this. Yeah, it's tough, but, um, yeah, you know, the, and this, and also in the world we live in, and, you know, things travel fast, faster than they ever have, and um yeah man living on living in a van on the road with people you gotta you gotta learn to have respect for each other so it's not an easy life but um yeah i've i've been lucky man i've been really fortunate though myself to have lucked out i've had close to probably like i said i've been doing this project now close to six years and and i've had probably about 15 or so musicians and uh you know i could really think of probably just you know, all but two uh, have been, you know, we're still real close and the door is still, like you said, a revolving door. It's That's a pretty open. goddamn good run, man. Really, you know. I feel good about I'll it. I'll tell you this right yeah. now, like, so. I've probably only fucking went through, like, less than 10. That's and, and, That's fantastic. And some of them are, but I mean, first, but I played solo most of my career. Sure. I just recently over the last three, four years have got tired of playing solo. I'll do it every once in a while, but now I'm like, if I don't have a band, I'm not doing it. I'm just not you good enough to hold people's attention. Yeah. Stoned over dream travelers when they're playing with you. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Tony and Kevin are my main guys now, but I had Dan Infecto with me for a minute from Bob's band. Uh-huh. Billy Cook did some shit with me. Cool. And then I had this other guy that turned out to be a fucking psycho, though. Like, and he played with me for a few, few shows, on and off for about a year, and he turned out to be a fucking nut job. But he's the only yeah, one that really no hates me. Man. I think he's the only one that really hates me out of everybody that's played with me. Oh no, you know, actually, my first drummer, because I had a drummer for a minute, he turned out to be kind of weird too, and. <laughs> I don't talk to him anymore. I don't think he hates me, but we just don't talk because shit got kind of weird. So, well, that's still a pretty good fucking track. Right? Yeah, out of all I those say. people, it's like. But I was gonna say, like, 
I'm at two already, and I've only got like less than ten band members. <laughs> you know. Oh, man, that's that's sounds like it's still a pretty good track record, man. It's uh, yeah, it's hard. It's a hard dynamic, you know. It it really is, mm-hmm. especially you know when you're bringing people out. I learned it real quick. And you're bringing people out, and they're playing under your name. Yeah. You know that right off the bat. You know they they want an incentive. You know, yeah. of why, you know, why, why, am, why am I here? You know, what's in it for me? I'm playing your songs under your name. And so, you know, I try to make it as, as easy as I can. You know, there's no tour bus or anything like that, but I try to make it, you know, comfortable for, for the, mm-hmm. the people that are rolling with me. And, um, you know, hopefully they all know I try to put them, you know, first and foremost when I'm out there. So it makes sure people are eating. <laughs> eating and sleeping when they want to at least yeah. <laughs> at least when they get you know know that they have an option yeah. but yeah man so yeah well you got a tour coming up here pretty quick don't you yeah I'm, uh yeah so the first i'm doing a short run so i'm, I'm going to be doing some some packed in kind of shorter runs at the beginning of the year but i'm doing uh the last few January, the last few years um there's a convention uh show uh called the nam show uh, big, uh oh that's right this is down in cali isn't it yep down in southern california it's didn't you run into Canada. kevin down there last year yeah i did actually i, I thought so that's where he got his uh, fucking van Halen guitar at i think yeah i ran into all of them down there last year okay what's the show about again i forgot so it's just all the new equipment and all the new gear, instruments. Um, just it's a, it's a massive you know, music showcase and trade show um, at the convention center down in Anaheim, California. So you know all the guitar companies and amplifiers and okay. capos and st- everything that's coming out for the new year is kind of down there. Um, and the last four years or so, I don't know about a little bit of number, but oh wow, you hey. Are you like talking weird into the phone? I don't think so. Nah, I, I got you back. It was doing some weird shit there for a minute. All right, keep okay. going. Sorry, you're fine. Um, but I, yeah, the last three or four years, I've been I've been working with a great uh, guitar company out of Idaho called Teton Guitars. Yeah, those and are they, beautiful sounding guitars too. Yeah, they're great, man. And and they, they you know they have a booth down there. And uh, they go down to the show every year. So when I started working with them, they invite uh, uh, a handful of endorsed uh, artists to come out, kind of hang out. It's a Thursday uh, through Sunday thing. And you just kind of, you know, kind of help um, show off some of the new stuff that they're putting out for, for the new year. Uh, it's been great. There's a lot of other musicians, songwriters um you know recording engineers and stuff like that so it's really fun to to kind of go down and just see what's going on and 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 whatnot but to get to the shows i always play i always tour and play when i'm out there usually i'll go out to the the nam show during the day and then bounce around and do shows around southern california so actually i'll have amy uh back playing upright with me for those shows um and then a good buddy of mine kevin um, who I don't think has played up at Ruckus with me before. He's a fiddle player out of uh, Phoenix. And uh, so we'll be doing like a short run of shows right around that to kick off kick off the new year. So Old be Amy fun. Estelle. Old Amy Estelle. That's it. She's a good one. She is, man. Yeah, she's she's a good one, man. She's, she's been fun to watch, too. Yeah, it was fun to watch her go out with Bob as well. So yeah. It, it was cool. Yeah. <clears throat> What about you? What's coming up for you at the beginning at the beginning of the year? Any uh, any stuff you can let me in on for not, for 2019? Not yet for the the beginning of the year. Got some shit coming up in spring. Sure. Okay. We talked a little bit about okay. that already. Right. I'm not quite ready to drop all the info yet, but cool. Well, I hit you up on the DM. That's what the kids are saying these days. Hit hit yes, you up on that the, shit into my DM. Yes, yeah, slid that into your DM. <laughs> So maybe you'll get to see who and want their match and I'm this way here in springtime. But uh, yeah, then I'm going to Moon Runners. I'm kind of con- I'm having kind of a me year, man. Like anything I do as far as raucous stuff is gonna be kind of low key. It's a building, a rebuilding year, if you will. And you know, like 
like I'm not packing it in by any means, but uh need to go back to the drawing board and figure things out. And I'm actually kind of fucking fired up. So like might be the calm before the storm. All right, I like it. So well Moonrunners, man, I saw that that run. You're doing that with uh the travelers out out to there. Back yeah, back. and it's kind of, that's kind of a clusterfuck too, because we uh we might end up meeting up with whiskey dick for a little while. We might end up having honey cut with us, but we might not. We haven't quite figured out what the fuck we got going on. We need to figure it out pretty soon now. One thing's for sure though, me and the travelers are going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well and one thing's for sure too, man. Moon Runners looks like a great lineup this year. And that was one of my favorite uh shows and one of my favorite festivals that I was able to be a part of up to this point, but but last year in particular and yeah Um, yeah josh does a good job out there josh is good yeah he asked me about you last year and i told him i said that guy's the fucking total package and that's maybe why i got on it last year so (laughs) thanks yeah and if you didn't pick it this year and you want it on don't take it personally he doesn't book i mean i know this year is kind of an exception but for the most part he doesn't book a lot of a lot of double acts you know no you know we talked man he's been great to me um josh has been super great and and we did talk about things for this year um and yeah i I totally understand that as well you've got yeah he'll probably uh, put he's booking at reggie's now too he'll probably book you anytime at reggie's up there in chicago that is if he can yeah i've seen he's been doing some shows out there he had uh yeah hellbound out there a couple times and yeah, it's a good spot. I like Reggie's. That's a cool. It's a cool place. I've never been there, man. It's been years since I've been to Chicago. It. I'm so excited to do it too, oh, man. You're gonna have a yeah. fucking blast, man. That should be a great one. But yeah, I mean, oh, and we got you know we got the Cheating Hearts album coming out this year. That's what I got up for the label. I, I and I'm gonna need that. Yeah, you know? we'll get you a copy of that for sure. Uh, I saw Felix is playing. Uh, he's coming. He's got something coming up this week. I thought I saw on social media maybe or something um, playing out. I think it's Oregon. next week. He's got his new wife. Family's coming in from Ireland and they play like Celtic folk music. I think. Okay. I could be All fucking right. wrong on that though, but uh, if I am and you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you are listening, you're on Oh, he'll be listening. I told him that I was going to have you on, and he said, fucking brilliant. If he loves the shit out of you. Well, I love the shit out of him, too, and he knows it. Um, Yeah, dude. How did you end up hooked up with him? You covered one of the songs, too, right? Yeah, that came ab- Yeah, yeah, that came about um, through uh, Ashley. Um, Ashley Ray? And Ashley Ray. And she uh, is uh, she was living down in Ashland, Bedford area, yeah, and, for a long time. And when I started playing down there, um, I think it was one of the first times I played down there. I mean, I had played in other bands. I've been I've been touring in other bands before before this project, and I played in Medford. I played at Johnny B's in an old band of mine. Um, so I think initially it was kind of like my first go to when I came back around with the solo project. I was like, all right, I'm gonna go you know, we're going to book at Johnny's. And so that's where I met Ashley. She had come into the show mm-hmm. and offered us a place to stay. And so we ended up at her apartment, just fucking crunched up in there and just hanging out, drinking whiskey after the show and kind of just, you know, talking about music and listening to, listening to music. And, um, and somewhere along the way, she put on a cheat in the heart song, um, or maybe even the record. Um, it is a little blurry, um but anyways put it on and i was like you know who is this and and was really enjoying the song and she told me that it was cheap and so i was telling about felix a little bit and huh. uh and that's how i got turned on to it, it was that's really fucking hard. rad i had no idea ashley ray turned you on to them that was it man and she you know she told me about him and and then we hooked up through social media felix and i and, and made the connection a little bit and i had listened she gave me a copy of the CD. It was like a burnt disc, you know, we took yeah. it in the van with us. And so I listened to it. And then, you know, I just really loved the first line in Long Gone, Lonesome, and Low Down, and, which is the song I, I asked him if I could cut and put out on the record I did a, a few years ago. So, yeah, he was great about it. I mean, I just, you know, that was kind of, you know, I just reached out and sent him, I think, like a Facebook message, or maybe I got his number. I can't even remember at this point now. And, 
just asked him if he'd be all right with me doing a cut of the song and um yeah man so and he's just been such a good guy he's been super supportive so fucking felix again man i love you he's always yeah. been su- such a good stand-up guy to me so uh, but that's how i got turned on to it so ashley ray thank you very much yeah so, i love ashley man she's been around yeah. i've known her for a lot of years man yeah, she. Well, I think that's kind of how you and I got hooked up. Even at one point, she had asked me if I knew who you were, um, and then she had mentioned this thing called Ruckus in the Boonies, and and then uh, I think somewhere along the way, you know, we connected. Yeah, but I think she she definitely was the first person to uh, to tell me about you and what you were doing. And you know, it's great too because you didn't fucking throw that card out at me either. You sent me a fucking booking inquiry like the proper ass way. <laughs> and you didn't fucking be like, I know these guys, I know these, you know, Ashley Ray sent me your way, you know, you were just like, here's a press kit, and yeah. this is what we're about, <laughs> and I was like, these guys are good, and then I found out, like, you know, I went and did some research, and I was like, fuck yeah, man, and then just one of the best books I ever did, man, like, I booked some doozies that I didn't know before, man. And I've really fucking regretted it, but you're one that I rolled the dice on that. I was like, this guy is fucking, you know, uh, man, the real fucking lot. deal, man. Uh, that means a lot, man. So, I think, dude, you. I really think, you know, I've been around for a while. I'm not trying to toot my own horn or play the whole back in my day kind of shit, you know, mm. but I've been around for, for a while. And I think that you've got probably more potential than most people I've seen in this scene. As long as you keep at doing what you're doing, you know, um, I'm kind of surprised that it hasn't caught on yet. You know, I think when it does, it's going to be like a wildfire, you know, cause, uh, you know, I mean, I see like Leroy, and I see, um, I mean, and Leroy, I think, could have been bigger. I think he's kind of kept himself down, you know. But, I mean, I've seen, um, fuck, I'm trying, you know, like, like Lucero and these guys, you know. There's a whole genre of country music that hasn't got you yet. That once they do... They're, you're going to fucking go places that, you know, our little niche of roots music couldn't take you to, I think. <laughs> um, you know, like the Turnpike Troubadour kind of fans, you know, and I'm not saying like that you sound, sound like that, but I'm saying those guy, kind of guys would dig what you do, you know? Sure. No, I know what you mean. Um, no, I can I tell that you, that. I can tell that you appreciate that music like I do, that Texas red dirt shit, you know? Absolutely. Um, a lot of fucking fans in our kind of, you know, the ruckus crowd, they don't fucking know that shit. They don't know who Hayes Carl is. They don't know who Ryan Bing is, you know. They want sure. the crustier, punkier fucking kind of rootsy country, you know. I like a good clean, like, I like people that know who the fuck Guy Clark and Towns Van Zandt are, you know. And I can tell you Absolutely. like that, too, you know. Absolutely. That's why uh, when I heard your voice and I heard your lyrics, I, I fucking bonded to you instantly, too. And then um i was kind of surprised that honestly after hearing your music i was kind of surprised that you'd done work in this part of the root scene really because i thought you were kind of coming from that other side because there's like that whole idaho thing you know like that just jeff crosby guy right and then the bronze brothers shit you know that's kind of where i thought you were coming from when you hit me up Ah, okay, okay, that makes sense. I see what you mean. Mm-hmm. Because your your press sheet said that you you'd open up for Lucero and some other folks. Sure, sure. Where did and you man, open up for you Lucero got at? Details, man, I love it. Um, so yeah, that's great. So I opened up for Lucero out in Salt Lake City, um, just supporting them like in a local. Yeah, city yeah, yeah. In town. Um, but but a band like that, man, you know, like you you nailed it right on the ben head. Ben Nichols is know? a fucking genius, dude. Goddamn right he is. I think know, he's a man. hell of a songwriter, and I love how like a lot of his shit doesn't sound the same, but it's still good. You know, somebody like Ryan Bingham, I really love Bingham. I fucking sure. he's one of my favorites, but he's kind of fucking fell off his last couple albums. Ben Nichols has always got something for me anytime he puts something out. You know, absolutely. For me, you know, that was you know Ben Nichols and Lucero was you know when you bring up a band like that. Um, you know, that was a band for me that really, really drew me into stuff that, 
you know, I grew up playing and, and doing the punk rock thing and playing in punk bands and ska bands. You know, mm-hmm. that was really how I got into playing in live bands, you know, as a teenager. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I do. I remember really clearly, um, you know, a good friend of mine putting on, you know, Lucero's Tennessee record, you know, I think when we were 17 and being like, man, like, you know, somebody telling me that this was like a country band. But, you know, I didn't really know what country music was at the time. You know, my dad had some some old records and some Waylon and stuff that, you know, classic rock. And, you know, I just, I didn't know what it was. And so for, for me to hear, you know, I was so, I had my head so far up my own ass trying to be like a punk rock team. Oh, yeah, I was there too, man. Right. And to hear bands like that and, and stuff, it really hit, it drove, I don't know, it, it drove me crazy because yeah. I really loved it. I'll be honest, the um, only thing that got me out of yeah. my shit was Johnny Cash made that fucking cover of the Nine Inch Nails song, and they did that video. Okay. And then all of a sudden, I was a country fan. Before that, I couldn't stand it. And then I would just tell people, oh, I like Johnny Cash and, you know, Waylon, the Highwaymen. Other than that, I don't give a fuck. And then Hank 3 came along, you know, and sure, that was how I got mine. But, uh, yeah, well, I mean, man, we've I- all got our shit, you know, like... Like, if, if I think a lot of people are fucking so goddamn unhonest when they talk about what they listen to in high school. You know, right. there's so many people that are like, oh, man, I listen to the punk rock. I've literally heard people in their, like, mid-30s talk about how they saw the Ramones, like, live when they... I was like, what, were you, like, fucking six? <laughs> like, I saw the Ramones live in New York right. and blah, blah, blah. And, like, dude, you're, what, you're, like, seven years old and you snuck out of your fucking house? Like, man, we yeah. are. It's like you said. I mean, we, I think you were getting there at least. I mean, we all, yeah, I mean, we yeah. all listen to so much different stuff. And yeah, I know. Like, phases in life. Yeah. And, yeah, you got to own up to that. And I yeah, mean, because I it makes you who you are, whether you want to admit it or not. Every that's piece exactly of right. anything that's inspired you is Absolutely. part of what you are. You might not be able to hear it. You know, other yeah. people might not be able to hear it, but you hear it. I'll guarantee you, you hear it, you know, when you're making Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I fucking love Tupac. I love fucking that hip hop shit from the 90s. I love like really terrible 90s fucking pop rock, like the death breath of grunge. Like, I love like the fucking old Goo Goo Dolls and fucking Bush and shit, you know, and Oasis and Everclear, <laughs> you know, it's like, sure. dude, it's like, like there's no no point in fucking even denying that you're you like oh man anything. like when you come on the road and you come in the van we listen to so much shit it's definitely mm-hmm. not just like a, a country driven you know i uh, can tell that flavor. about you for sure you know but, but but going back to what you were saying there are so many different veins of you know this quote-unquote country music or uh-huh. music or whatever and for me, you know, when I started doing this project, or or at least going back before that, like writing songs and like what comes out, just because I listen to, you know, all different kinds of music, what comes out is what comes out when I write songs. And so it's, you know, there are so many different veins of things. And it's really cool to hear you say that, of, you know, the Texas, you know, kind of seeing that whole red dirt mm-hmm. thing and down there in Oklahoma and in and, and the terms. Oh, yeah, fans, dude, Oklahoma is fuck dude they're getting their own thing going on like john moreland and the turnpike troubadours and shit dude see and that's like a whole different vein of these guys like john moreland you know i mean it's just yeah there's so much good stuff you know i mean people you know it's like i'm not taking shit away from cody jenks or tyler childers but i'll tell you right now they're good songwriters but they don't hold a fucking candle to john moreland it's a shame that guy isn't more fucking famous than he is because he's probably my top like my number one favorite songwriter of our generation oh wow yeah yeah you like him that much he's he's one of my favorites too man he's i, I he think is. so i agree too man he's he's one of the best for sure and i haven't had a chance to see him but, but i saw him I, he's weird i didn't get a word in with him so He's not gotcha. social at all, which is, I'm normally not into that, I'm, you know, I'm like, but I was like, whatever, he's great. So I'll just drink my beer, watch the show and go home, which is kind of <laughs> nice for once, you know, sure, I tried sure. to get him at Ruckus and they were like, uh, you know, and it was right when he first like came out and he came out kind of swinging like those videos of him down actually in Salt Lake City at that fucking, uh, what's that place? The metal shop or what? what is that? It's a heavy metal shop. Yeah. Yeah. That, those videos started surfacing and I hit him up and they're like, we want six grand. I was like, eh. Yeah. 
Now he's worth it all day long. It'd probably be a steal, but, you know, I'm not, you know, I was like, at that time, I was so fucking nervous about fucking paying any more than a few hundred bucks for somebody, you know? Sure. Well, yeah, I mean, he's, yeah, he's top notch. He's kind of uh, fell off, though. He's picking up steam, and then that's how I found out who Tyler Childer was, is because some of Tyler Childer's videos popped up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then you got... He's great shit, too, man. Definitely like and then I the think kind I of heavy learned, hitters. I think I learned who through all these guys, or who all these guys were through uh, fucking Sturgill Simpson, actually, kind of got that whole rabbit hole of YouTube blown yeah, up. Yeah, well... Me. He kind of, you know, I mean, obviously him and Stapleton are the the faces of of the the real country, you know, in the top forty kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I guess that's, that's happened, but you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Both those guys are fucking great, um, and it has. It's led to, you know, like you said, stuff with with Tyler Childers and um, you know Jinx Whitey. You know, I love I love Whitey. You know, I love yeah stuff yeah like that. Whitey's. Yeah, you know, those guys are killing it, man. I like They're Whitey better. more than I like uh, Jinx, actually, mm. personally. And I've known who Whitey was for a long time. I got kind of tired of everybody talking about how he sounded like, oh, man, like when he, when Whitey first started coming around, everybody was like, oh, fucking, he's going to be the next Waylon Jennings. And I kind of was like, dude, nobody's going to be the next Waylon Jennings. No, <laughs> you nobody know. will ever be. Nobody, ever, nobody will ever be. I got kind of tired Waylon, of hearing but... that shit. Everybody wanted to compare him to Waylon, and I was like, dude, just let the guy be Whitey. You know, just let it be what it is. You know, and and he's done a great job. You know, and that's the thing is, um, going back even to what you were saying a few minutes ago about, you know, kind of keeping going with what I've been doing in in this project, and you know, it is to me, it's a, it's a big game of longevity. Um, and that's the thing about what I love with this kind of music, you know, whether it's the singer songwriter, the country music or outlaw shit or honky tonk, however, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's about living in the bars and being a guy that's writing songs and living in the bars and doing that and living on the road. Um, is it, you know, that it, you gotta have longevity, you know, you gotta keep doing it. And, and those guys, I feel like in, in guys like us, you know, you understand that, you know, it's not, it's not a quick game. You know, no one's coming knocking at your fucking door these days with the red well, deal. Well, it happens, but bucks. I'll tell you what, it kind it of happens. pisses me off when well, it it's does. It's going to be a little more you know? and far between these days. Yeah. And uh, and grinding it out at the bars, you know, and at the venues, uh-huh. you know, night after night, guys like Whitey and stuff like that, just that what I was getting at. You yeah. know, I remember seeing him at a really small room here in uh, one of my favorite little bars here in Salt Lake, and, you know, now he's coming back, I think, in February, and, you know, playing the main one, you know, mm-hmm. big sold it, selling it out. Cool to see, though. Yeah, it's you good. Know, and it is good to see. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people get pissed about that shit, too. It's like, dude, like, motherfuckers got to eat, you know? <laughs> fucking, yeah, absolutely. Dude, absolutely. like, don't hate on absolutely. a motherfucker because he's oh, selling no. fucking shows out, man. Like, the no. guy's got to fucking eat, you know? Got to eat, man. I've seen it fucking happen multiple times where people <laughs> just think, like, like fans nowadays, like, feel like they're part of the band sometimes, you know? It's like, like, come on, man. Like, you got to fucking love the guy for fucking, even, he might not stay at your house anymore, but, you know, like... Yeah, they still got to eat. They still got bills to pay. And, yeah, and, man. You know, mouths to feed. But we, I mean, we all do this because we want to, we want to, like, what is, what is this? That guy says on Almost Famous, he's like, we all got into this because we want to avoid responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Which, to, like, to some extent is absolutely true, man. I mean, we, yeah. you know, we got into this because, you know, you love it and you're a fan of music. Oh, like, exactly. Right and when you, and you, you get like into it, you songs. realize how much business, you know, it's like, like it's, it's tough, business, man. man. You know? And it's hard, you know, some days, some days it is hard, you know, I think I've learned that a lot too with, the dynamic of doing a, you know, having a band and, and guys playing mm-hmm. with you or behind you or whatever is, um, is some days it is, you're wearing more of the businessman kind of hat. And, and some days, you know, on those days, I wish I was, you know, able to sit down and write songs and play my guitar and, and, you know, be, be with the guys and, and hang out and shooting the shit more. But sometimes you just can't do that. You know, sometimes yeah. you've got to fucking, you know, make sure that, you know, the oil's changed and there's gas in the van and, you know, people are safe and there's shows on the books and, you know, it just is what it is. But, you know, you know the drill. <laughs> yeah, man, you know, I'm right there right now. It's kind of why I'm enjoying this time, you know. It's, uh, 
So it's been the last five years because I was one of the boys for a while, you know. Yeah, man. And then Absolutely. Uh, things changed, and then I fucking became one of the the guys behind the scenes, and and I had my fun with that too. But like you said, like I miss bullshitting, you know. I miss like hanging out and miss writing songs and miss playing, you know. And uh, it's hard to do that when you're fucking putting the shows on, you know, like you don't even want to fucking see anybody by the end of the night because everybody wants money from you or wants something or, you know, it's hard to keep that. You can only keep that smile on your face. You know, once it hit 2.30 in the morning, I'm about fucking done, you know. Absolutely. Well, it's hard to keep that creative flow and mentality Mm -hmm. going, too. You know, I get it a lot. You know, I got it a lot more, I think, the first three or four years when I was doing this project you know, the guys and girls, you know, gals on the road, people that would tour with me in my band, you know, what are you working on? You know, do you have any new songs you're working on? You know, let's play something new. And it's like, man, like we're already, Uh you know, we're playing a lot of new material and and I'm always trying to work in in something new, but it's tough. You know, I, I, I'm not just like, you know, some guys can sit down Mm -hmm. and crank out a new song every other day or whatever. Yeah, man. Uh, I just don't work that that way. I take a little time. Yeah. My wheels ran dry for a while, you know? Sure. Sometimes they come that way. Sometimes they don't. But yeah, they come um, for me, yeah, you know, like I said, there's some days where when you're on the road, you're just wearing so many different hats or when you're mm-hmm. putting on the shows. So, you, you know, the last thing you're thinking about is, you know, writing a song or jamming with the with the band or whatever. But that's good for you. I'm glad you're getting back to it sounds like you, you're at least yourself. You're getting back to. Yeah. You know, getting, ex- getting excited about things. That's that another shows, thing, too, so. is like, I feel like. If I can find that old part of me again, you know, it'll help me be a better ruckus person, I guess, you know. Like, well, I get, I get Towards that. the last year, especially like the last year, I really felt like I was like losing myself a bit, you know. Like uh-huh. I didn't care about ruckus as much and I didn't care about shit really, you know. Like I, I, I like, I changed my whole life this year pretty much, you know, like made a big move i changed jobs like I, I i eliminated a lot of things that were making me unhappy so that i could focus more on things that do make me happy you know well that's good man good so, deal yeah i that's just awesome, kind of flip this interview into a to me talking about nah, myself. Fuck that it's been a good back and forth man <laughs> i think it's been good i you know and i ask questions too because you know you and i we've We've gotten to know each other a little bit, but not a lot over the last few years. And so yeah. I had to ask a couple. Yeah, man. And you're one of my favorites out there. I'm always looking forward to seeing what you're doing, man. Like, uh, <clears throat> you're always first on my list if I'm booking something, you know, and I think you can make it. Because uh, once you do break big, I want you to remember me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I appreciate that a lot, uh-huh. and you know, and you know, like I said, you know, I think the next the next year or two, you know, I've been on the road really pushing this project the last five or six years, and you know, I got a few releases out, but I'm really excited. I'm I'm kind of changing a few things up this this next year, um, as far as you know, probably how much I'm going to tour, um, but it's going to be hopefully for the better. Like I said, you know, really to put in time with a new record. And hopefully do a little more quality over quantity, mm-hmm. um, if that you know makes any sense. No, it makes you know, total sense. Add. So, you know, are it's you just, playing? You're playing things with things. some other bands too, aren't you? Sorry to bulldoze you there. Oh no, you're good. Yeah, I've got another project. It's been a side project for about, man, it's probably been about four or five years. It's with my older brother, um, who's one of the reasons I got into playing in, in music and bands. You do drums, uh, right? I play drums, yeah. So this was a three-piece uh, kind of punk rock band, and um, you know it's fun. It's kind of fast and yeah. What's it uh, called? I forgot. Reva Rebels. That's right. Cause oh man, yeah. We talked s- about trying to get it up there. This yeah. Month. That's right. I yeah. I don't think your brother was happy with the price of the <laughs> what ruckus people make. But. No, I think I think what it was was more too that he wasn't at a spot where him and the, the other guy in the band were able to come out and tour uh, up there. Yeah. So they would have had to meet us up there because I was already on the road with. The, with the oh band. yeah, it would have been too much bullshit for it been, one it show. <clears throat> but. Yeah, I've been trying to keep my hands, you know, in the mix with that. I really love playing. That's drums. really good too. Like, 
for anybody. I'm going to put the link to your guys' band camp on this. Uh, um, yeah, we just dropped a new, actually the first record we've done with that project, the first real release uh, just came out um, in November, um, probably about three, three and a half weeks ago. Um, so you can go, you know, find it, stream it. Uh, Reva Rebels, R-I-V-A. And uh, yeah, I'm excited about it. You know, there are songs that we, we started putting that thing together <clears throat> a while ago and it's finally seen the light of day. Um, but it's a fun project. And uh, so if anybody, you know, fan of some, you know, some punk rock and roll, you know, go go take a check, take a listen. Oh, yeah. But, you know, what about you? What's coming up with music? Are you putting anything out before you go out? Uh, anything new or fresh coming no. out before you go to Moon Runners? Not really. I mean, this is the 10-year anniversary of Dog by Harris, so I feel like I should. I think Even just a little something, maybe. Yeah, I think I'm going to try to get something out probably by this time next year is probably more realistic for me. Okay. I like but that. I'm going to re-release uh, People Like You Hate People Like Me because there's a song on there by a certain gentleman that I don't really care for anymore. Okay. And, and I just ended up getting the rights to it back from the old label I was on, which, I mean, I never signed the rights over, but it was always a handshake deal. But I made sure it was okay that I do something else with it because we finally sold the copies that they printed. So um, I've got a few of those left, and I'm going to redo it. I might um, actually do a cheating heart song for it to replace the other one to fill it out. So it'll have like a, maybe a special new song or two on it you know but it'll be oh, yeah. basically the same album it was and i'll probably redo the artwork on it and put it out for my own style put it up on uh the all the so you know the streaming outfits and shit you know sure but yeah i might i'll probably try to i might try to do that before moon runners and then i've been putting a lot of other people's stuff out lately and that makes me feel good too watching them helping other people get their art out and watching it come to life is a real cool thing, you know? Absolutely. Well, you've been a big, you know, person and and facilitator with that. You know, you've been putting a lot of, a lot of records out for people the last little while, at Mm -hmm. least as long as I've known you, you know, you've been, you've had a good hand in that, you know, putting out traveler stuff, you know, obviously putting out, you know, the cheating heart stuff. I mean, yeah. And that's been fun. Something good. The Cheating Hearts one has been really fun. And the Felix one was fun, too, because, uh, you know, Felix didn't really want to do it. And uh, I convinced him. I was like, these songs are great. Let's just do it. Fuck it, you know. And Jack Gibson was in his ear, too, from Exodus at the same time. Okay. So I think that helped. So Jack has got had a, had a studio down there towards um, Sonora, I think. So down by where Amy's at. Uh-huh. So Felix went and recorded there and then they've got that that album bounced all over America for a minute. They ended up in Nashville is where its last stay was at and Lucy, formerly of uh Stumptail Dolly, put some fiddle on it and then uh Jack played some instruments on it and Honeycut played some instruments on it and then Yeah. We've got some really fucking cool shit, man. Um, yeah, dude, we, and, um, we got that live live album of yours, too, man. I should send you those tracks. Maybe we can do something with that. I can't wait to hear it. I We've mean, got honestly, all, I just stuff. got all three of the years, too, so we might be awesome. able to, like, um, go through them all, and if you don't like one year, you might like the next, you know? I would love that, man. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, this next year, same thing for me. You know, I'm not in a rush to put out a record either. So it's like, you know, it's been, even though it's been a little while, um, I've got some other ideas. I definitely have, you know, some new songs that I'm really excited about and some other, you know, ones in the works that I think I'll be excited about. So Mm -hmm. um, I definitely want to try to do some other, just some some other avenues of, of putting them out, you know, maybe first, even before just recording, maybe doing some videos, you know, and some things like that. Um, like I said, I've been doing more in a couple studios in town. So I'd love to do some more kind of live session stuff. You know, I love, I love that kind of stuff. I love a quality live video. So I try to do some of that as well, but I, man, I'd love to hear the live tracks from Ruckus um, and see what you got. So when you get them, send them my way. 
Yeah, yeah, I will. Um, I've got one of them. I'll I'll look for them <clears throat> this weekend when on my days off. I'll check it out, and then the other ones I just got, so I've been sorted through because the whole thing is such a fucking process, man. It's like really a long, tedious thing. I couldn't even imagine all of you know trying yeah. to sort through all that shit after after that yeah and then it's like sat around long enough to it's like it's not like i just watched the sets and everything's fresh in my head so like and then uh, all these weird curve balls get thrown at you like the speed of the song gets slowed down like half a second so you can't figure out why the fuck shit sounded weird sure, <laughs> sure. so uh but yeah that'd be fun man we should do something like that i've always wanted to release something with you and well, I was going to say that. I think it's, it's definitely going to happen. I know we've talked about it the last couple of years, and, uh, you know, I, it hasn't lined up, but I definitely wouldn't count it count it out. Yeah. Um, I think I think it'll happen. I right think on. it should. <clears throat> yeah, that would, be, that would be ideal. You're pretty high on my list. I've always, like, been kind of, like, you know, talk, when I talk to the travelers, and they're always wondering who, like, I've been talking to, and I'm always like, you know, I'm like, Lauren's pretty high on my list. I'm trying to win Lauren over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, you've already won me over. It's not, even, it's not even about that. For me, it's just been, you know, like I said, I've got I got a good batch of songs right now, I think, but but nothing really ready for like a cohesive. Recording's record. so fucking and, uh, expensive too, man. Like, I, like, you, like you kind of touched on this a few minutes ago, but like I'm done half-assing my albums too, you know. Like, I feel like I've half-assed most of them. So, like, I'm, like, I'm totally, like, not going to do something unless I'm completely happy with the situation. Well, I think you should, man. That's the way to go when you're making a record. When the stars line up, the lineup is kind of where I'm at. And once it's good enough to be put out, it'll be good enough to be put out, you know. And that's what happened with the last one. It's like Billy Cook showed up in fucking the Northwest and, and I had the money to fucking go in the studio and it was like everything was there and it was ready to happen and it did and it came out perfect and I spent I went in, I spent two days laying my tracks down, I spent two days laying on the couch listening to everybody else lay their tracks down and fucking telling them like, Hey, maybe you should try this, maybe you should try that which all those guys were like such talented musicians. I didn't have to tell them to do shit really, you know. Billy Cook was a godsend in fucking uh, the studio. So how did you, well, how did you, or where did you record that record at? I recorded in this house studio in Seattle that Dan Infecto records all his shit at. And it's it's nothing famous. It's not, it's just a little fucking studio. This dude put in his house and it's got great acoustics. It's uh, got everything you need. The guy's really nice. He lets Dan rent it out for like 50 bucks a day. Oh wow! Great. If, if he, I mean, I mean, if there's nothing else going on there, he's just like, whatever. I'm not doing anything. Might as well make fifty bucks. I'll sit in the house and watch TV. You guys can fuck around out there. It's pretty soundproof. So, um, and he's even came out. He played some piano on it too. He just dug what was going on, and I was like, hey. Actually, Dan asked him like, hey, do you think it would sound good with piano? So, yeah. uh, that's awesome. Well, I agree, man. You know, when you're making a record, um, you know, yeah. it's important it's important to take your time. I have this fine balance with it. You know, I just like I said, since the last few months I've been off the road, I've been doing more um actually engineering, you know. Um I, I engineered and recorded uh Razor Glass, which was the second release I put out. And that kind of is what got the ball rolling with me really wanting to, you know, record more bands and do that side of things and being a songwriter too, I really like producing songs and like working with other, you know, songwriters on stuff. And you know, I got asked to to uh, co-produce an album for a local band here uh, in Salt Lake City in October. And you know, it's kind of what I was getting at is it's a fine balance when you're doing a record. You want to spend time and make sure you get things sounding, you know, awesome, you know, and and getting things right. Make sure you get everything the way you want it. But then you have these bands and you know and these artists that spend too much time and then you just fucking obliterate a song because you've chopped it up so many damn times and so many different ways yeah, okay. you've added like you know, pro two is a curse and a blessing 
Mm-hmm. Oh, it is, it is exactly that. And that's what I mean is, you know, you, you know, for me, you know, when I do a record, you know, I give a really, you know, pretty firm limit, you know, and schedule of, of like how I'm going to, you know, track it. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, if I'm doing a full length record, you know, probably won't spend any more than a couple, you know, I don't even know. I don't even want to go down that, but yeah, you know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a balance. And, yeah. Uh, I try not to spend more than a week in the studio when I go in, really. Yeah, you don't need to. Yeah. I, I mean, send I all mean, the, I, I record I record all the tracks before I go in and send them to anybody I'm having play them and then they listen to them and they get an idea of what they're going to do. We hit the studio and that's that, you know. Sure. I pick, usually I pick people that are so like cool with me that like when they play their shit, it's like perfect. You know, it's like, sure. I couldn't imagine, like, it's better than what I imagined in my head. You know, I've been lucky there. There's no well, coaching. I've been lucky or, there, too. No, yeah, there's I've no lucky. coaching or hand-holding, you know. It's like, they're better than me, <laughs> you know, just right. more than what I thought, you know. Well, one of these days, you should come down to Salt Lake City, stay at my house. I'll roll up a couple fat joints, and uh, we'll we'll track some tunes in my new studio. And, uh, you know, that's kind of what I've, you know, been putting, like I said, a little more focus in, into um, kind of planting, just trying to plant some, some roots around here. Fuck, I got all uh, summer off, man. You might get more than you bargained for. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm trying to get the ball rolling uh, down there with that a little bit more. Actually, that's been a big a big part of things. I know we've been talking about music, and it's part of music, but... Uh, you know, I've got a good friend of mine, the, the engineer, his name's Wes Johnson. He did my last EP, uh, the last release I put out, and we did it at his studio, uh, which is called Archive Recordings. And um, he's been a really good guy to me. He just opened up a gorgeous new studio up in uh, just North North Salt Lake City, uh, like five, ten minutes from downtown. And just, man, it's top notch. You know, I mean, it definitely, you know, stands next to you know, your LA studios and your Nashville studios, um, and, and, and everything like that. And he's been great about letting me come in and, and shadow and kind of work under him, um, as much as, as much as I can. And, um, so I've been kind of assisting him and kind of just being the bitch over there at the studio and helping, you know, out trying to learn more, um, and, and uh, and whatnot. So anyways, but I'm also trying to get a thing kind of like you mentioned, that home studio in Seattle that you guys recorded at, you know, Dan's buddy, you know, I've got a space at my house I've been renovating the last uh, the last couple of months, and hopefully that'll be ready by sometime in February, and uh, that's going to be where I'm hoping to do a little bit more of that, and, uh, man, I'd love to get you down here, and, you know, uh, hopefully a whole lot of other friends from around the country at some point come come stop through and, and record some songs with me. Yeah, so. man, that would be be amazing. Keep me in mind. Yeah, well, we're going to be mind. passing through in, in April, so we might hit you up just to hit now, you up when anyway. you guys, Now, you're coming through in April. Um, when or where is that show at? Do you guys know yet for Salt Lake City? We don't know yet. Well, um, I'm going to throw out some feelers this weekend. Um, well, let's let's talk about that. I mean, we don't have to do that, obviously, here on the the interview. But let's keep me in mind. I'd love to help you guys out. I'll be around in April, so. Yeah, dude, we'd love to hit you up. We I think we we planned on it for sure to hit you up. Cause, the uh, travelers, they I just saw them. They just played here not too long ago. Yeah, and like they won't, you know, we won't need any, you know, special treatment. Like sometimes when I hit you up for shows, so you can. Oh, no worries. No throw worries. us in somebody's backyard. We'd be happy. <laughs> no, you know. I get you. I get you. We'll get you something good, man. Salt Lake, you know, it's something that's been great about it. Hopefully, Maybe. we can get Ryan from the Ryan from uh, the old Ugly Valley Boys to come out. <laughs> That'd be awesome, man. That'd be fantastic. I don't know if I I uh, have that sway. They seem to lay pretty low, but fuck, I love those guys as music. I'd love to hang out with them for a minute or two. They're great people. Well, you know, last year, actually, this time last year, I was talking with Ryan a little bit more, his family and, and his wife, they, I don't know if you know this, but they make neon signs. Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah. They did um, that big video and stuff. For that. So yeah, they did a, or they did a, excuse me, they did a, they did a sign I had them do for my house uh, last year for Christmas for my wife. And so that's how I got to know him a little bit better outside of the music. Um, but you should sure as shit hit him up and, 
you know, like I said, you know, Salt Lake, this is it's a good time right mm-hmm. now to come through, I feel like. And, is it? Um, you know, it is. You know, I've I've been back, you know, now we, we moved back about a year, a little over a year ago from Phoenix, and I was gone for about two years. But, you know, in the last little while, it's gotten to a point where, uh, you know, there's more places to play, you know, within like a 45-minute radius than I think there has been in a really long time or, or maybe ever. Um, and it's happening more, you know, off nights of the week, you know, there's places you can go find, you know, some music on a Tuesday or a Wednesday where, you know, that might not have even ever been an option for a while. And, yeah. um, and there's some really good places. So you guys definitely got to keep coming, you know, and anybody yeah, else yeah. out there that's listening, we're you know, coming, come through. on, come on through. Yeah. Uh, fucking, um, I like Utah, man. A lot of people dog on that state, but I really uh Yeah, they do. <laughs> I uh it's weird, I'll tell you that. It's a weird vibe. Like even just stopping at a gas station there is weird, but it's really it's, fucking cool at the same time. That's it, right? Well you nail it on the head. It's fucking weird, but it is very cool, man. It's, well, it's, it's like, a great place. People always think Mormon, Mormon, Mormon when you can you know. But sure. But at the same time, man, like, uh, there's a lot of fucking punk rock roots in that state. There's a lot of, uh, absolutely. There's a lot of, mm-hmm. yeah, there's a lot of music in, in a lot of roots. And like you said, you know, punk rock and, you know, a lot of metal and, and hardcore straight edge scene was really popular in the nineties out here. And, um, man, just crazy. It's, it's, it's different than a lot of people think, but yeah, it is. It totally is. It's a cool town. Great. Man. Great, great place, man. And Salt Lake's coming around. You know, we're we're working to get weed legalized medicinally. Yeah, didn't your governor just go to Nevada or something and smoke some pot on on YouTube or something? Yeah, I don't know what's exactly going on with that. I'm actually, to be honest with you, I don't think I'm exactly caught up to speed on everything that's taken place here in the last week. So I'm not going to comment on anything. But <laughs> it did pass medicinally. And then it's just been some crazy shit ever since that. So, uh, but we're making moves in, in you know, Salt Lake um, and Utah in general. Like, you know, it is, you know, it, it has been, let me, let me back up. It, it has been, a, you know, predominantly Mormon state or influence state, but it's, you know, it, it's got that, but it's, it's not, it's not as much that anymore. We're getting a lot more people, you know, coming in from, you know, other places, other cities and states. And it's become a little bit more, you know, definitely a lot more liberal um, and, and more diverse. You know, we've got more breweries, you know, like for somebody like yourself being in Oregon and the Northwest, I mean, you know how, you know, popular the, the craft brewery thing is, mm-hmm. you know, and that's only recently caught on really, you know, to where we're getting the, the micro brews and the tap rooms and, you know, and so they still got that cool. law where you can only get like watered down booze. <laughs> uh, not as much anymore. It, I mean, it basically, we, yeah, you're talking about uh, all the beer for uh, basically everything was 3.2%. Yeah. But you could buy normal beer at the liquor store. Um, but the liquor stores are very few and far between. They're kind of hard to find in the Valley. There's not a whole lot of them, but you can get, you know, high point beer. And now that we've got more craft beer and local breweries, they're carrying at the, you know, local grocery stores and stuff. Uh, you can still find some higher point beers. Um, so it's, it's, like I said, it's coming around. It's not as bad, but um we'll get there we'll get there but yeah man anytime the door's open for for you and anyone else man it's a great place i'd love to see you you know i, I know you guys will be through in april so i'm looking forward to it yeah yeah we'll be hitting you up for sure um that'd be great well shit man we talked for an hour yeah, right? and a half it's been the longest show ever it's just pretty cool though that's great man we've been having a good good time man it's been yeah. great catching up with you and I, I really appreciate you having me on and and uh and taking the time to do this has been great yeah man uh is there anything else you want to add you guys you got any merch up for sale uh you know it's a good thing you brought that up so my website which is probably the worst timing ever <laughs> um it's down for uh construction um so actually michelle over at zuma design she's doing some stuff for me um she's done my website and 
uh, there's a lot of other friends, but it's, it's getting worked on right now. Um, but, but what I will be doing here, uh, I know this will be up fairly, fairly soon. So, um, I'll have been doing some posts through the social media, got some items through the end of the year, um, that people can pick up directly through like PayPal or Venmo, um, and some things like that. Have um, you ever tried but, big cartel out? I've done big cartel. Yep, I've I've done big cartel. Usually, I just the last two or three years I've been and I that's what I did before I started running it just through my own page. Okay. Um, but big cartel is great. Yeah, it's a great way to go. I was gonna say it's it's, it's something good for a pinch if you can't sell shit. I mean, it's really easy. You know, you know how it goes because you use it. But yeah, and I may throw one of those up too. Um, over through the rest of the year for that. Yeah, because you can have like five things for free, and then you need to pay for it. Yeah, so. I pay ten bucks a month for mine, but you know, and honestly though, I'm with you though. I'd rather have it just on the website, but right for now, yeah, but, I'm kind of DIY, trying to figure shit out, you know. Absolutely, man. And big cartel is a good way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, so I'll have some things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, just moving into a new year. Definitely going to be working on uh, getting a new record out at some point. It might be the tail end of 2019 that it comes out. But, um, you know, definitely working on, got some things cooking up, so it'll be, it'll be good. But, um, yeah, man, I appreciate it. It's always good catching yeah, up dude. with you, man. And, we'll have to have you on again, man. I, I intend on doing this for a long time. I'll we'll have to check in every few months or so and, uh, keep you as a regular. Hey, I would love, I would love that. And, uh, hey, are you, so do you got any plans to tour up here anytime soon? Um, maybe, maybe spring. Okay. Um, we'll see what happens. Well, hit me uh, up. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, hit me maybe up. Spring. <laughs> <laughs> maybe spring, you son of a bitch. We'll see. Um, I'm hoping, um, and if not, um, definitely at some point I'll be back up around that way. Um, yeah. It just kind of depends. Um, maybe we'll do a video maybe. like me and Honeycut just did. Oh, that'd be great. Well, and... Maybe by that point, like I said, I'll have my little webisode thing actually dialed in, ah. and I can have you on my life behind the wheel. That, that would be sweet. Yeah, that'd be rad, dude. That'd be great, because I got to get that thing going, just a little bit of fun. You should. Like, it's, you got the voice, man, and you got the, uh, you're natural, because you flipped this interview on me, like... <laughs> I love this stuff, man. I'm a talker. You know, I, yeah. just, I like shooting the shit with my buddies, man. So you make it easy. You know? Right on. So it was no problem, <laughs> dude. Well, it's good to talk to you, brother. Um, I'll keep yeah, you posted on some stuff. All you people out there listening, be be watching. We both got a lot of shit and the shit going on. So uh, I think you'll be probably seeing something soon from both of us. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So. Um, well, I guess if you want some merch, just hit you up on the slide in and slide into the old DM, huh? Slide slide into the MDM. That's what the kids and, say. Uh, and we'll get you taken care they of. They also call things bougie <laughs> these days. You know what bougie is? Uh, bougie, is, does that mean Gucci? It's like fancy. Heard, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. I've yeah, heard yeah. fucking people say that shit's Gucci. That's been, I work and, with uh, like some 23-year-old girls, so like they're they're teaching me how to be cool these days, so. Nice. They're trying to teach you how to keep yeah, it lit. Yeah, so I've been saying everything. You keep it lit, yeah. Because I've been saying everything's bougie. My daughter's, like, super impressed and listening to a lot of Post Malone lately and saying things are bougie. So, you know, trying to her, <laughs> trying to uh, span my horizons some, you know. It sounds like you're doing a good job. <laughs> All right, brother. All right. Yeah. I love you too, man. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. All right, brother. Bye.